Who was the smartest person ever live? Shlomo HaMelech, King Solomon. This is what he said. Eved love leish malve. What does it mean? Eved love leish malve. Someone that borrowed money. Reuven borrowed money from Shimon. Reuven immediately became a slave of Shimon. Immediately. We know in the Torah that if he doesn't pay back, when the time comes, then they will sell him to be a slave. But King Solomon say, no. The second you receive the loan, you'll borrow from your friend, from your father-in-law, from your brother, from anyone you borrow, immediately you became his slave. If the smartest person ever lives say such thing, and it's difficult for us to understand what he means, we have to try harder. Because for sure he's right. The question is, why don't we see it? No. It took me five seconds to see it. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. But it's get deeper than that. Let's say Reuven took from Shimon, which is the most righteous man in Israel. Tzaddik. He would never call to ask what about my money. He will never come to show his face to make you feel guilty. Nothing. He's very rich. I gave you a thousand dollars. No big deal if you pay, you don't pay. He will never bother you. You still a slave. Why? Mentally. Mentally you have no rest until you pay back. Today is the exact opposite. The world became so corrupted, if King Solomon would live today, he would write the exact opposite. He say once Reuven gave a loan to Shimon, Reuven became a slave of Shimon. Why? Because Chazaka, the certainty is that people that borrow do not pay back. Eight out of ten don't pay back. They are, the Torah says, Love Rasha, Velo Yeshalem. Wicked borrow and will not pay. Why does it say, Love Rasha Velo Yeshalem? It should have said, Love Velo Yeshalem Rasha. Barot and didn't pay is wicked. Why? Because he didn't pay. When was the payment due? A year later. You borrow, you say to your friends, can you give me a thousand dollars? Yes, for how long you need it? One year. I will return it to you next uh, February. February came, March, April, no money. Now he became Rasha. He did not keep his promise. Didn't pay back. But according to the Torah, the minute he received the thousand dollars, he's already Rasha. Why? Poor person that doesn't have cash right now and borrow from a good friend for a few months' money is Rasha? Why is Rasha? Are you not allowed to borrow? Nobody wants to borrow. You borrow because you don't have money. You would rather have plenty of parnasalas. You never have to ask favors. If you already embarrassed yourself to ask for a loan, we have to assume you really don't have. And it's very big shame for you to ask for a loan. So if someone comes to you and say, can you help me out? I need money. I have to pay my rent. I don't have money. You already know if he got himself to come to us, that means he doesn't have that many other options. Why is wicked? I don't get it. He's anus. He's miserable. He's a poor guy. He's an unlucky guy, you name it. But why wicked? The answer is because you're not allowed to borrow 
unless you have a backup plan, plan that in case you won't be able to have the cash in the date that you promise, you have an alternative way to pay back on time, meaning you have some diamond ring, you have a car, you have some kind of collateral that you can give to the person instead of the cash. <coughs> a brand new coat uh, worth three, four hundred dollars, something. You get some items that you can pay him back. If you don't have anything, you're not allowed to borrow. You can only borrow if you say to the lender, I have nothing. I don't have any collateral to give you, no mashkon. I'm hoping with Hashem's help that in 12 months from now, the date I say, hopefully with your money I'll be able to buy a donkey and do some moving work, and hopefully I'll have enough money saved to pay you back. But I can promise that. This is my intention. If he got the loan anyway, it's not Russia. Because he said to the lender, I don't have right now a backup plan. I'm counting on this business that I'm starting. If I will have Parnassa, I'll be able to pay you back. If not, I won't have the money. Now the lender has two options. He wants to say, so, how, so you expect me to take the risk for you? Why should I take a risk? I'm sorry, I cannot help you. Or the lender is a tzaddik. He says, you know what? Hopefully we won't get to it. If we get to the situation that you don't have, maybe I'll give you extension. We'll see what we're going to do. He doesn't want to say, I will forgive you. Because mm -hmm. then you help his yetzer even if he have the money not to pay back. So what does he say? We will see, maybe we will extend the loan. At least he did not mislead him. The problem today with the people that borrow, they don't have any plan in case they won't have the cash to give something instead. Come, take the title of my car, it's your car. Take my watch, it's worth much more than a loan. Sell it and give me the rest. Something. When a person borrow and there is no guarantee how he's going to pay back, meaning he doesn't have what to sell to materialize it, he's rasha right away from the first minute he got the money. Even if he paid back in the end, on time. Hashem sent him Parnassah and he paid on time. His credit is still good. He's considered rasha in the eyes of Hashem. Why? He was willing to take a risk of taking money from another person and not paying it back in the date that he, that he said that he will. Now, how many wicked people was just added to the wagon? Huh? On your shopping cart? How many more wicked people just joined the, 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 the wagon? Thousands. People that borrow and have no security how to pay back. It's not a shame to be poor. It's not a crime to be poor. It's a crime to say something that you don't know for sure if you can keep your word or not. That's a problem. 